Hello and welcome to Data Driven, the podcast where we explore the emerging fields of data science, artificial intelligence, and data engineering. In this episode, Frank and Andy celebrate three years of the podcast and meander in their conversations as they often do. Some things never change. Here are your hosts, Frank and Andy. So for those of you joining us on YouTube and uh, our Facebook live page, Andy and I are doing an experiment. And what's data science without experiments? Right, Andy? So true. So. How's my your, audio, uh, Frank? Your audio is it... awesome. I don't know oh, what's good. going on okay. camera. Good to hear. All right, I've turned my camera on manually uh, using the app that came with it. So the software that we're explaining for folks and for you, Andy, uh, I just want to bring our listeners into this. Um, Data Driven started three years ago, uh, plus or minus a few weeks. We we wanted to hold off on the celebrations um, for a number of reasons. Um, and um, we originally envisioned this show to be kind of a video podcast. So technology and costs have come down that uh, if, assuming Andy gets his camera going, <laughs> we will be able to do, there we go. I see you. I am here. I found the settings button. Awesome. Um, so this is good. This is good. Um, so we have the ability now to uh, kind of do something um, more along the lines of what we originally envisioned. So as awesome as you may think the show has been, uh, we actually had even we have even grander plans. So um, this is just an experiment. Uh, might even put this live on the feed as kind of like a call it a data point. How about that, Andy? I like it. I like that a lot. Because the advantage is that because I'm using a product called Restream that I can pipe to different uh, uh, outputs. So this is actually going to Frank's World TV YouTube channel, uh, our Facebook live feed. And because of the magic of automation, uh, this is also going to be, um, uh, I'm actually going to, once this ends, we'll see, uh, that it should pick up the, um, the video feed from Facebook and then pipe that um into an mp3 file which should be ready for upload to the feed so again it's data science right andy (laughs) data magic data magic magic. uh it's not science uh if it if you know i i tell that to customers a lot like you know it's okay to fail because it's called data science it's not data Mm -hmm. perfection um so you know and and sci- calling it science lets you say, well, it failed, but you know we weren't sure it was going to work. So it's kind of a. <laughs> uh, so how's it going? I know you have a call in like five minutes, but yeah, it's uh, I'm I'm waiting on uh, on someone, and if they um, if they don't show up, that's that's okay. They're busy. It's a cool. regular call with uh, with someone who subcontracts with me, and he's awesome, oh, okay. but cool. he is a data scientist as well. And he sometimes gets distracted, heads down. And that's why you pinged me about five minutes till the call. And I was like, well, I got a call in five minutes, but let's do it. <laughs> I was upstairs <laughs> drinking coffee when I messaged you. And um, I'm glad you did. This is yeah. cool. I like this, Frank. This is, you're right. This is our vision. That's why um, we registered datadriven.tv is so well, we there, could. There's do another reason exactly. we want to register. There's, right. There's a reason why we registered .tv, but there's a re- the, the real reason we didn't do .com is because it was taken. So. Well, there was that. <laughs> Full transparency. Minor but inconvenience. Minor inconvenience. I turned it into a potential opportunity to make it into a video podcast. but the You uh, did. And, and look, here we are. So don't yeah. give up on your dreams, kids. That's right. Um, no, things are, things are going good here today, Frank. A, l- a little busy. It's... Um, it's an interesting time to be an entrepreneur, right? Um, in technology, it's it's usually feast or famine, um, but there's a lot of factors kind of weighing in, um, right. you know, on, on all of that today. Um, I think 2020 has been that kind of year where it's just been, you know, one thing after after another. But um, Frank, you and I are both people of uh, of faith. Right. And what I say when it's good times and bad times is, you know, we're in God's hands. And a lot of people don't like us mixing that kind of stuff in. But right. I'm, well, I'm different you know that what? way. If you if you're, don't believe in God, then 
you know, you can take the stoic approaches. You can't do anything and, about it anyway. I mean, well, and we had, you know, we had, uh, I remember um, a couple of people that we interviewed uh, mm -hmm. brought that up, brought up the stoic approach. Brent Ozar stands out. Right. Um, right. He right. may have been the last one. So, and, yeah. And then Bob so, Ward spoke a lot of, Ward. about his faith. Right. At, right. At the end of it. And, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say I still believe there's room for. Well, I mean, hold their own there's something. Needs. There's something I read. It might have been from Taleb. It wasn't in one of his books. It might have been like a tweet or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, that wars and plagues happen so frequently in human history, yet we're still surprised when they happen. Yeah. And that kind of that kind of stuck with me. And and you know, if if you are a person of faith, hey man, that's cool. If you're not, that's cool too. Uh, we all have to live on the same planet. Uh, absolutely uh, do. Yeah. Until Mars is an option, then we'll share two. Um, <laughs> but um, um, I mean, it, you know, as someone, you know, you all know. I mean, I don't know. Not everyone knows, but you know, I was at the World Trade Center. Got it. I had. PTSD. Uh, and one of the lasting legacies is of PTSD is kind of the um, the overreaction to stress. Yeah. Now, yeah. to say that 2020 has been a stressful year, both for family reasons and kind of uh, outside, yeah. this is an understatement. And, um, you know, I, you know, I, it, it, it's, uh, it's very easy to cower and kind of like just zone out. And I've done that. Like you, you can figure out when that happened, when, if you look at the blog, when kind of the post kind of dipped <laughs> as well as the podcast when we didn't record. Um, right. But kind of, I had this moment of, of clarity that, you know, reading, reading, uh, I think it was, you know, about stoicism. It was the really good book called the obstacle is the way. Yeah. And, you know, there are two things in this world. Right. There's one way to look at it. I'm paraphrasing, but basically things you can control and things you can't. Yep. So things you can control, well, you know, laying in bed all day, <laughs> it's not gonna fix it. Right. Um and things you can't control, and you can't do anything about it. So at some point mm -hmm. I kind of had this thought that how can I make this how can I be a better person? despite all this? How can I be a better father? How can I be a better um, technologist? How can I be a better like human being just in general, right? Because, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I've listened to a lot of Tony Robbins over the years and some people like him, some people hate him. But one of the things he says is that the quality of your life is largely determined by the questions you ask yourself. Hmm. And we're really off topic here. Um, That's but, okay. Um, we're, we live in a very odd year, but I mean, you know, if you ask yourself constantly, why is this happening or why is this being allowed to happen by, you know, mm -hmm. uh, some divine entity, yeah. you, you're going to get answers that lead, I think, to despair. But if you ask yourself questions of how can I use this to be a better person? What can I learn from this? Um, you're going to put your head in a better place. Now I'm not saying that's going to magically solve everything, but honestly, yeah. if, if falling apart, isn't going to help anyone. It's, actually going it, to it's interesting. The, uh, where, you know, where the Euler's overlap uh, yeah. between stoicism and, and faith and where they don't. Right. And I think it's, you know, it's, it makes, it's important distinctions. And I think there's different flavors of both. Stoicism is it or is it a Venn diagram? Well, I think this would, I, you could probably get away with a Venn on this one. <laughs> Fair enough. Oh, Most, actually, since we're doing experiments, let me try this. Let me try this. Yeah, I want to try this. yeah do uh, your uh, pen thing. I see your pen. Yep, I got my pen. <laughs> and uh, let me make sure customer notes. I had a huge customer engagement yesterday, which is why my LinkedIn live feed yesterday was kind of like, it was short because I had to pick up the one of the kids from daycare, but um, oh, okay. I was <laughs> my brain was pretty much melted. I, I missed well. it, Frank. And and while <laughs> you're bringing that up, mm -hmm. um, I don't know if the, our listeners know it or not, but I've been doing Twitch. Yes. Uh, oh, and, did you see that screenshot I sent you? 
I, I think I did. Well, you right. send me a bunch, Frank. Let me finish this thought. <laughs> I send you, I send you a lot of stuff. Poor Andy. Let me scroll uh, up. The one I think I said the who's it's it's not the profile one, is it? Um, no. Let me finish this. There's one of you on. All right. There's another of you on live. There you are. All right. Your data shirt. I want to do a joke. Okay, do a joke. So this is. I think you're right. I think it is V E N M. No, no, I spelled it. I spelled it wrong Uh, because you'll see. Okay. Uh, Bad movies. (laughs) Vin Diesel. It's a joke. I don't know. Infographic Uh, humor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. (laughs) Infographic humor. But it is. It is. It is actually Ven, and I think it's two Ns. but this is cool. So we can actually do, uh, we can go further than the original vision in terms of, um, uh, you know, doing architectures and stuff. Because when you talk about data engineering aspect, especially, and some of the more esoteric kind of um, mathematical concepts around um, yeah. uh, data science and AI, I think having that whiteboard will be very helpful. Absolutely. And it's nothing yeah. fancy. I mean, it's like, it's like literally the cheapest uh, Wacom tablet you can get. And and here's a here's a good example. Let, I can bring it back now. I can bring it back full circle. Bring it back. Um, is I did a um, uh, just before I switched to my new role as an MTC architect, we did an architecture design session with some company that was a customer of mine, and we were trying to architect something um, on a virtual whiteboard because we're all virtual, and I really struggled to draw it with the mouse. And I was oh, already gosh, yeah, stressed out. Hard. Well, and it's not you. It's not it, it, the sample rate on the mouse is like twenty to forty times per second, and the sample rate on a pen on the stylus system, at least in Windows, is uh, one hundred and twenty. So it's oh, not okay. it's not you. It's it's okay. literally the technology. Um, gotcha. So for those that don't know, I was a tablet PC MVP prior to joining Microsoft. And for those you don't that's know, that's why tablet you know PC, these things. Frank. That's why I know these things. For those of you who don't know, tablet PC was a platform that prior to the iPad. But I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to leave the negativity there. So, so, so to bring it back together, I kind of, I was really, I, fortunately, the customer was happy, but I was not happy with how I performed, and I was kind of like, oh my god, this is my new job, and you know, I wasn't still hadn't transitioned, but I basically was kind of like a practice run, and I felt like didn't quite, I felt like I didn't do my best. So I kind of, you know, I had two options here, right? I can, you know, I kind of thought about that that stoic kind of mentality of um, what can I do to be better, right? Right. It's not a character flaw. It's just. No, it was your first time out. Yeah. And um, so I was like, well, you know, what I really needed was if I could draw the diagram, because when you're when you're on a webcam and you're kind of like with a customer and you can't read the room like you normally can. And you're struggling to draw with the mouse. <laughs> so I was like, all right, how can I make that experience better? So then I, I was like, well, you know, um, look for, I'm like, well, I, I need to write on thing. And well, you know, uh, don't want to buy a whole new, like, you know, monitor thing. But, you know, for like 40 bucks, I was able to get this, this Wacom tablet. And I, it's nice. been transformative, um, you know, so. And I spent a lot of time, I, I, I like to doodle sometimes. So like I, I got used to it. So I spent some time practicing it. So now you get to see really bad jokes on, on now this. So, uh, <laughs> I, but I think that's just, for me, that, that kind of was like, you know, I was stressed out and, you know, one of the advantages of having kind of dealt with the, af- the longer term after effects of PTSD is you, you have this ability to kind of stop and be self-aware mindfulness, I guess, or self-aware and like, all right, why am I feeling this way? Right. Yeah. And I actually talked about this on another podcast. Um, uh, it's called the rad dad podcast. I'll put a link in the show notes, uh, where we talk about that, how like, you know, um, that was kind of like, it helps me be a better dad. Now my kids may have a different opinion of that, but, (laughs) (laughs) uh, but I mean, you know, the context was like, you know, you want to yell at the kids because, you know, it's like 30 minutes into they were supposed to get dressed and they still don't have their socks on. You know what I mean? Right. So you kind of have that moment of like, before you're about to yell, I kind of take a deep breath. I'm like, all right, focus, you know, 
and that's yeah. kind of like it's it's become like a habit now and i'm sure many people will point out the times when i didn't do it but you know just like ai just like data science 80 90 percent model eh, it's good enough for deployment <laughs> <laughs> well you are you worried about overfitting frank as a dad oh i hadn't thought of that one hmm that would be a good book series philosophy and data science that somebody that could work that. somebody should write and, and you know just to throw this into the mix mm -hmm. uh for your kids you're their best and worst example of a dad this is true simultaneously so true you know i um i've i had this experience being a dad where i'm you know i was uh, a dad way too young uh two daughters who are awesome and um then i i became a dad again i have three three children uh, two sons and another daughter. And what I learned going through that experience of, you know, two sets uh, of children is that it's a vicious trap that, that it really is. You will, if you think about, you know, how good of a dad you are and the time you're not spending, especially if you work and most dads work, right. Um, you know, it's, there's this, this whole thing. I, I should be spending more time with my kids. And the truth is yes, probably, Probably most dads should be spending more time with their kids. But um, the second time around, I have spent more time with my kids. I still feel guilty. Yeah, that was the first thing I heard that, you know, you, you know, you, you. What's interesting was, and I go into detail about this story. I think I shared this with you, not on the podcast, but like my younger, I'll give the two minute version. My younger son gets in the car after I pick him up from school one day. And he he's like upset. He goes, oh, they want us to learn an instrument. And I'm like, like anyone has time for that. And I turned to him. I was like, really? <laughs> I was like, look, and I, I, I gave him my stump speech, which I'll spare the audience, but kind of like, um, you know, everyone on this planet has the same 24 hours in a day. That's right. Of all the things, talent, money, resources, anything the only thing that's evenly distributed in our existence is time bill gates warren buffett have the same amount of time as the poorest people in the world it's really yeah. about how you manage that time now yes bill gates warren buffett can pay people to do errands like you know groceries um pick up the dry cleaning that sort of thing because what they really what they really have learned is to optimize their time right. and i kind of went on this thing in a way that a 10 year old would understand would, would understand it you know and then months later and i i just saw him roll his eyes and kind of like I, I was a kid too like i think that's what kids don't really understand like i was a kid too like i know i know this is a game so so like he he um i read a something he read and it was something like you know what's what did what's a lesson you learned recently and it was all about like everyone has the same time like almost verbatim my speech which I've spared the audience. You can go to the um, the Rad Dad podcast, kind of hear the whole kind of thing. Very cool, Frank. But uh, but yeah, so I mean, it's you know, um, I'm excited to have the show. We're 251 episodes in. This is, I guess, 252. Three years. Um, let me pull up the math here. The calendar. Um, 252 divided by three is 84 shows per year. Bad, not bad i was hoping we hit 300 to be honest with you yeah well it's not just you frank i mean it's uh you you mentioned earlier that we didn't record because the just just stuff going on um it's been that way here too i mean i've been i've been slammed i've been um you know i've been writing uh, a little more i the last time i had a book come out was in 2017 and had three come out that year how did you have four come out that year Maybe. May, there may have been one that slipped over from 26. Because I was teasing you that, like, you've been slacking. Yeah. Cause, you know. I have been. Well, it's it's accurate. Just, I have been. Four books in a got, year, dude. Cut yourself a little slack. You're, I've you're... got, uh, <laughs> well, it depends, too, right? Because right. if it's a rewrite or a new edition or something Ooh, like that. Good point. Good that's point. not nearly as much work as writing from scratch. The one book I wrote was a Silverlight book. And one day I will expound upon what happened. Uh, but Let's just say that when the second edition was coming out, this was just before the Silverlight Apocalypse, um, 
my employer at the time, which was not Microsoft, decided that, hey, you work for us, so everything intellectually you produce is ours. So yeah, we'll which get, makes perfect sense. We'll get the royalties make. of it. And I'm like, uh, I do this on my own computer on my own time. And yeah. honestly, <laughs> you, you, writing a book, is you don't do it for the money. And, um, you know, and they were like, well, here's what we'll do. The second edition will take the royalties from and then we'll give you some. And <laughs> you can keep the royalties you already have on the existing book, which I thought was nice because I'd only worked there like three months and the book had been out seven months and so what i did was after some very tense negotiations with the owners and founders of of said uh company i so they called my publisher said i'm out don't want to do it and um which and i told them i was like hey i know you have your policy and i know you're not going to change your mind but here's the unintended consequence i Mm. canceled everything i was supposed to do a plural site course because they they basically said we you know and i'm like don't want that don't want now i'm like i'm out and i said like this is what you're doing so instead of getting my name out there and this company's name out there essentially what you're doing is you're squashing any kind of thing now i know rationally why they did that but you know the the problem i had was they wanted me to see their point of view but Mm. they didn't wouldn't even entertain my point of view but well you know frank i own a company Right. And I've got people that are associated with me here. Mm -hmm. And I find that kind of thinking very short sighted and it fosters bad will. Totally. Um, Because even though you're not mentioning them by name, um, folks are clever. They can figure it out. They they could. If (laughs) if only there was some site where all of your previous employees were linked in to your profile. (laughs) Oh, I see what you did there. I see what you did there. No, no, I don't. I don't wish them bad will. Like, I yeah, mean, yeah. I mean, they had their point of view. My my issue was like, there was another company in Richmond that I almost worked for, but they wouldn't work with me. On, I mean, honestly, I wanted. <laughs> Again, this is not a Kvetch session. I swear. And for those of you who don't know, I'm from New York, right? Uh, Kvetch is a. I think it's a Yiddish term for complain. Um, it maybe you know what that means. Maybe you know what, but. Anyway, so this is not a Kvetch session, but, um, you know, they wanted me to work for them. I wasn't happy where I was. Again, you could probably figure out what company this was. And there was a lot going on in my life. My dad was sick. He died. And, like, so there was a lot going on. Yeah. And I basically said, all right, I understand that I make X amount more than what you typically pay. And, you know, they came to me with an offer. And I said, tell you what, I'll meet you halfway. And they're like, no, that's not our policy. Okay, let me repeat that. (laughs) (laughs) This is where I am today. And (laughs) this is where you want me to be. I'm not happy. I want to leave. But I'm not going to be happy anywhere where I have to take that much of a pay cut. But I'm willing to meet you halfway. And I know that it was ultimately, we're not talking about a massive sum of money here. It wasn't like, right. You know, I mean, it wasn't a lot of money, but it was enough to be like, no. <laughs> now, yeah. fortunately for me, uh, I met my wife uh, who lived in Northern Virginia and I, I left Richmond, although I do miss Midlow. Midlow was an awesome place to live. Uh, um, although it's crowded now, my God, we were there like last summer. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's um, it looks like North Jersey. Lives there. Yeah, it's it's gotten crazy busy. Looks, yeah, it looks like North Jersey. Um, but um, but cleaner and newer. Um, no disrespect <laughs> to North Jersey. But um, I don't know where we were going with this. But I mean, I mean, but but here's the thing. This is why this turned me off in both cases, and I think yeah. this gets into something that my current boss or mega boss, um, you know, Satya Nadella, he talks about empathy, right? He talks about empathy a lot. And if you don't know kind of the context of talking about empathy, it sounds very touchy feely, kind of like, um, okay. But empathy uh, is not just a touchy feely concept. It's actually, um, uh, there's a really good book. I listened to the audio book, never split the difference. Yep. And he calls it Chris Voss, I think is the author. And he calls it tactical empathy. Mm Mm-hmm. Which I thought, if you, I can't recommend that book enough because it's 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 awesome. And I've tried 
tried some of the techniques mm -hmm. and you know that there was somebody who was selling a course and it was like two three thousand dollars or some kind of mentoring thing and i'm i, I don't want to name anyone but i'm like right. I really want to do it but right i just couldn't justify the cost at the time and i'm just for fun i'm like i knew i wasn't going to do it but i was like i, I said to this person i said you know, basically one of the things that um, uh, that's in the book is, you know, you, you answer with how am I supposed to do that? Yes. And I just did it as an experiment and it worked because this person changed the payment plan. So it went from like in one yeah. lump sum to like, and then there was like a monthly thing. I still didn't do it because I knew I just didn't have the time to commit to it. But I mean, it's just amazing. So I can't recommend that book enough. I think he even has now a class on um, like a whole thing on masterclass.com where he talks about the art of negotiating. Yeah. So this guy knows the stuff. He was a hostage negotiator for the FBI for like 20 years. So yeah, yeah, and, he is. He's awesome. And the book is awesome. Yeah. And I um, would ask him to be on the show, but we know how that goes. <laughs> you know, the more I think about that. So Frank and I had a non positive experience. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How's that? When we tried we to ask, it. we hinted when, at we, it. we tried, we went after a big fish. And, you know, Frank, I, I think I own that. I think the approach that I took was not well thought out. So it's my you, know, you swung for the fences. I can't fault you for swinging for the fences. But I think we also learned a lesson that people we listen to, we admire their podcasts. We admire their books. We admire their thoughts. We even admire their protein bars. Yes. And you all are fair, clever. You can figure this out. <laughs> um, but they may not be the awesome people that we think they are. Additionally, or they may they, have hired on awesome people. That was what I was saying. Additionally, they are also in a place where they may have hired a virtual assistant who may be a jerk. Could be. Theoretically. Hypothetically. Yes. And that's kind of what happened where we didn't get, we one, we didn't think about the gatekeepers. Two, the gatekeepers have a higher opinion of themselves than is really warranted. Um, but I will say, um, I want to give a big shout out to an author who has been on the show recently. Did you get one? Did you get yours yet? I did. I have my book. I so this I is there. awesome. Um, we got a signed book. Um, yeah. So Bob Ward was recently on the podcast. Um, since I'm posting this relatively soon, this is going to be um, um, that. Uh, probably the previous yeah. episode. He posted like on this. You know, he, he was on a show. It was an awesome show. Definitely listen to it. Um, and I kind of appreciate now how we got involved with SQL Server a little more. So, like, I'm looking yeah. I'm going through the book. I'm like, oh, yeah. Um, so it's always cool to kind of know the story. But But he was awesome. After we hung up, he goes, hey, you guys. You know, if you don't have a copy of this book, let me send you a signed copy. Send me your address. And I'm like, that was really big of him. I thought that was awesome. It was. It was very awesome of him. He's a, you know, I, I, I like we don't hang out <laughs> or anything, but <clears throat> I, I'd known about Bob Ward for, for years and, you know, seen him speak a number of times at, at various um, you know, past summits and, and the like. And yeah, I think you saw him at Tech Ready. Yeah. Uh, earlier this year, late last year. Uh, and, February. Yeah. Okay. One yeah, of the, probably, if not the last, like the second to last presentation he's given publicly. Yeah, it's just that's kind of he's the way it is. He's he does. And he's very knowledgeable. Um, also very humble, I think, um, in the way that he and I don't think it's a it's it's false humility. He is he is just that kind of guy. And um, See, and that, that I think that that touches on empathy, right? Because like we, it does. Not only is he an awesome guest, but we just want to work with him again. You know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. So it's kind of like you know. So for this other character, we we uh, we, we invited. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I see his protein bars and shakes in in the store, and I'm like, I like eh, I, I, every time. Like they're at Sam's Club, they're at Wegmans. I like reach them because, and I'm like, well, they're expensive, and then I'm like. <laughs> you can't see this on the podcast, but you see the hand going to touch the thing. So let's do let's yeah, do a dramatic sure. reenactment. So so this this okay, here, here thing, and I grab it and I'm like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, Frank. I, well, I still subscribe to the podcast. Yeah, and like it pops up in my feed, and I'm like, 
No, I'm not. Gonna Maybe it. later. I mean, and it's not the funny thing is because it was his handler, it wasn't. It may yeah, not be his it really fault. wasn't him. We so, did have some interaction with him directly. And that, yeah, was, and that was positive. But but I think what really soured the milk on this was the fact that he blocked you and me on Twitter. Like, yes, we didn't harass. I mean, I don't think whatever. it was him. I think it was his handler. Who I think it was his handler, which is interesting because his handler then handles his Twitter, which is, you know, yeah. I don't know. Just, you know, it, it's probably in the three years of podcasting. Yeah. We can try to keep this on topic. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Uh, in the three years of podcasting, um, I ex- anticipated a lot of things. Some of them happened. That wasn't one of them. That was that was yeah. So, um, in terms of um, you know, um, you know, I guess that kind of makes this a three-year retrospective. Um, it, it but I mean, in, terms, in terms of our numbers, here, let's be super transparent. Let's be not. Let's be what we think other people should be, which I think might be <laughs> another stoic. Thing. Um, I'm liking that. While you're pulling that up, Frank, I'll say one other thing about empathy. The um, the book I'm wrapping up right now, mm-hmm. um, it's getting ready to go to you know where the publisher takes it and does everything they need to do. And with A Press, this takes a couple of months uh, for them to get it, and you know b- between when I'm done and then there's a physical copy. Um, oh, cool! And uh, there's a section, and I'm writing on uh, some pieces about automation frameworks and i have a section in there about empathy oh actually at the introduction of it i think empathy is a big part of software oh what no nope, i'm back now, there again. everyone can see and hear me i've got a little note down here at LinkedIn. oh so there's a little blooper then that's all okay. right so I, I need to figure out how this works oh here we go there we go <laughs> but there's our number so for those of you it. wondering all right, now you can see it. I'm sorry about that. That's so okay. I'll have to fix that in editing. Um, but basically, um, 130, we could round up, but let's just say uh, 137 and a half thousand downloads. Wow. And, um, what's really cool, you can see growth. So normally our episodes would, would tend to top out around three, 400. Uh, we're, we're almost to the point where it tops out at, uh 700 my goodness that's 600 um and what's interesting some of them go higher (laughs) and you know this gives me more um stuff so we definitely are growing i did notice the other day that we are somehow delisted from spotify so um i I, how did that happen (laughs) i think when so we use a uh this is an awesome um service called uh, podcast websites um which we've been using and they split up kind of their product into two parts a podcast hosting which is what captivate is right right and i think the url changed so when the url the old url stopped work i'm not sure but they automatically handled um apple podcasts uh google I don't think they automatically did Spotify. So I do need to, to redo that because hmm. um, that was a big source of things. So, you know, yeah. again, two ways to look at this, right? Oh my God, God we're off Spotify. Right. Okay, it's like, we're getting good numbers and we're not on Spotify. Imagine what happens when we re-add Spotify. See? Nice. About, good honestly, thinking, Frank. I love it. It's all on your head. Positivity. Yeah. I'm, and it's not, you know, it's not just playing some silly game. It really is about keeping yourself uh, motivated. Right. And, you know, and you and I go back and forth on this a lot because we're, it seems like, you know, one of us is up, the other one's down. Right. And we bounce and around normal. a lot. I think it's normal. You um, make a good team. So I think so. I, I do. I mean, you, you know, it's, it's, we have, it seems like we have strengths in the, um, each of us has strengths where the other one has weaknesses, except you don't have any weaknesses. So it's. <laughs> oh, I assure you, I do. <laughs> so speaking of books, um, I'm a big book junkie and I can't seem to find it. Uh-oh. Uh, no, that's around here somewhere. It's the, the art of war. I gave it to my uh, 10 year old to read. I saw the screenshot or a, mm-hmm. saw, maybe it was on Instagram. I think, I think it was on Instagram. That. Yeah. And this one's cool because there's there's multiple copies of it. And my favorite one, I don't know where that book is, but basically um, you have the original text. Yep. 
well, you have the original text in Chinese, then underneath is the English translation. And then you have mm -hmm. kind of like over the centuries, the different commenters have kind of added flavor to it. Um, oh, neat. which is really good. It's like, you know, so it'll say by land, you know, by, by the earth, Sun Tzu meant this. And like, right. they're kind of ruminating on it. Cause the book itself is actually really short. Yeah. It's not, it's not a lot, but it's very pithy, if you will. It's very meaty. And, um, but having that extra commentary really helped. This one is a, it has a really cool, um, um, all right, now it's going to bother me. I can't find it. But, <laughs> but um, what's really cool about this one is it's, it, it has this really fancy like binding and it looks like an old ancient like Chinese book and stuff like that. Very and nice. Half of it's the original Chinese script and the half is the English translation. So very I cool. it, it, it looks cool. It was definitely a very Instagram friendly book cover. <laughs> um, well, you got to um, think, you know, you mentioned it's short mm -hmm. and there's a, that's that's true of a lot of books that were written centuries ago especially before the Gutenberg press. And a lot of that is due to, you know, it was a lot of work. You know, it's like, it's not like what you and I do today. Like when I write a book, I start typing in a template, you know, in word, but they had to go make paper first. I was going to say like, there was no Staples <laughs> office depot, like whatever. They couldn't go to Walmart and, you know, pick up that. So I think that, I think that encouraged more of a pithy discipline. And I think sure, for us, sure um for us in the 21st century i think they chose their words carefully more carefully than we would today yeah in fact today it's the opposite right what are kids taught in school you need to write 300 words on this topic right you know and there was a meme going around like you know in text message you know it was like no you wrote no and then like you know in, in an email you write no i can't and then, like, in a, in a, in a, in a, ultimately, the, the punchline was at the end. It was like, unfortunately, at this time, due to circumstances, I find myself unable to perform said activity. You know, <laughs> we're kind of becoming more wordy because the cost of is not, there's no, I don't know. We're really deviating. That's okay. Let's, let's take it back to data science. Uh, okay. If you look here, this is the, the, I really, one thing I really do love about the folks that, um, um, captivate i think the parent company is now rebel based media or something like that but yep. what's really cool is the they really feed my visualization guy you know mm -hmm. uh, my inner visualization geek um so you'll see now they've added this thing where episode releases and you see it, we have a nice kind of up curve there yep yep and bob ward we had a pretty healthy up curve too and let's see if we can go back let's go to all time andy let's see Let's see how we. What done. does it look like over time? Oh wow! No, it won't okay. It won't let me overlay the episodes, but you'll see. Like over time, we did have some good spikes, hmm? and um, we'll have some more. We're not done. More. I mean, if you look, you know, our best spike so far has been, you know, within the last twelve months. So, mm -hmm. yay us! Yep, yep, yep. But um. So if, sorry if you're if you're not seeing this in the in the podcast, we'll we'll screenshot this and put it in the show notes. And cool. uh, big shout out to Andy because he does the show notes. Ah, I I I learn so much when I do that because when we're doing the show, mm -hmm. I'm kind of in a different mode. Um, you know, I'm kind of in hangout mode, and I'm not really thinking that much about it. And it's not that I'm not listening; it's that I'm listening differently. Um, no, no, back, there's different modes of attention too. Yeah. And when I go back and start going through the show notes, I'm pausing it and reflecting and looking up links and stuff like that. And yeah, there was I, a, I uh, listen to it and I, I, I hear it again too as I edit. Yeah. So it's like we I think we make a good workflow team there, you know, like Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know. So I like um, those fancy charts in the background. I know. Fancy charts. This is kind of like all time. Uh obviously, you know. Very cool. So if you look, most of our downloads have been uh, and we kind of see this from the fan email we get. We love fan email, by the way. Yep. Uh, we kind of see this in the fan emails that most of our audience is in the U.S. with the U.K. Uh, second. And um, most of our engaged listeners, though, I think are in the U.K., which is interesting. Yeah, really, I agree with that. It's got to be the British lady voiceover intro. That fits. Which, 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 you know, since we're kind of doing a three-year retrospective, I chose that intentionally for several reasons. One, I have a very New York, well, it's much more muted now, 
but I have a very New York kind of accent. Are you sure about that? Well, you don't have an accent at all, but <laughs> everybody else talks funny. You're right, Frank. <laughs> um, I didn't want it to be too East Coast, so I wanted right. to kind of mellow it out. And I thought, you know, a generic American accent would just, I don't know, just, I, I, and I, this lady, I think, um, Shifty Pop on Fiverr, she's awesome. She does mostly kids' work now, but um, I thought that would add a nice kind of British, you know, posh type of aspect to it. Because what I think, I don't know if a lot of uh, British folks know this, but when, when Americans hear a British accent, immediately we assume that everybody is like super educated and super sophisticated. Whereas so, when people hear me speak. Right. Or me, you know, I'll be like, hey, you, you guys over there, you want to, you know, I don't talk <laughs> like that generally, but like, oh, when I'm yelling at my kids, I'm like, you know. Right. You can't say that. <laughs> Every now and then, folks, if you if you don't know this, Frank will I I refer to it as Frank going Jersey. Frank going. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I've had him on speaker a couple of times, and I've had my one of my one or more of my kids in the car, and I'm like, uh, I didn't know, <laughs> and he didn't. It just be, but he and he he went on Jersey. There. I went on Jersey pretty quick. I can kind of control it now. Yeah, um, it's but, all good, though, Frank. I'm not judging, brother. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> Just, and I, it makes me laugh actually. Um, it is know. pretty funny. We had a pretty yeah. good. We had a pretty good thing. Like uh, I think with your older son. Let's not say where he broke down. His car broke down, and I was like, and then I said something. And you're like. Oh my God! Did he really say that? <laughs> Maybe we'll do that for the. We'll explain kind of this stuff in the four or five year retrospective. Um, yeah, we need a little more time. Or data but... driven, data driven after dark. Um, <laughs> um, no, but like, it's funny because when we first start, talked about doing the podcast, uh, we had originally said let's do it for three years and see what happens. Let's connect yeah. doing it for two, maybe three years. So I don't know. I'm game for doing another three. How about you? I'm up. I'm in. Oh man, cool man. And if you want to help, so um, um, we we do have that relationship with Audible. Uh, but if you want to support the show, uh, go head over to Audible. Uh, check out any of the things we mentioned. Obstacles the way it, you go to thedatadrivenbook.com, and you'll be routed to that. And then basically, you'll get a free audible free Audible book if you're not already subscribed. And um, I can't recommend uh, anything by Grant Cardone enough. Yeah. Um, I just finished Inner Size by John Asaraf. Excellent book. Um, there's also the two books we talked about today, um, Never Split the Difference, uh, which is about uh, negotiations. And The Obstacle is the Way. And I forget who the author is on that one. But uh, that's also good. It's a good kind of introduction to stoicism. And, um, but yeah, and we also have our t-shirts, which, um, Amazon kind of shut that down, um, because of the pandemic, they shut down all the t-shirts. Oh, right, right. So apparently they're going to, they're going to reopen on July 30th. So, okay, um, cool. And, um, yeah. So if you buy that, you get to wear a geeky shirt and you get to support the show. So, and support us in the next three years. Of course, we have a couple other ideas that we've, um. We've, uh, we've been pondering. That's okay. I looked at my phone too because I was like, I don't know. My wife was messaging me. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, so I think this is cool. I think what's really exciting about this is one, it took us three years, but we finally have the platform and the setup that we originally envisioned. Yeah. But, you know, with this fancy uh, schmancy thing here, we now have the ability to whiteboard, which is something I never envisioned. So keep going, keep pushing towards your dreams and your goals. Um, even It may take three years. I mean, the, 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 the origin story of the name Data Driven was from Black Friday in November of 2016. Uh, we didn't launch until essentially early June 2017. Or late May. Uh, late May, yeah. It was Memorial Day weekend. It yeah. was Memorial Day, yeah. So the last weekend in May. So it was... Um, when, when everyone was in front of their computers at home. Well, I, I intentionally kind of did the soft launch, but what was not intentional <laughs> was that it took us months to get this going. So, you know, um, it 
it was well, really me kind of hacking away at the getting the video. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, we you needed know. to learn how to do this. And yes, you took the lead on, you know, how we would do this. And yes, we envisioned as I, cause I remember having those conversations. Mm -hmm. We envisioned like in January, um, when we got the, the URL data driven TV, it's like, okay, data driven.com was taken, grab mm -hmm. data driven TV. And we said, we will do what you see on your screen today. Right. If you're watching and, and when I had enormous problems making it work reliably, <laughs> I props to you. Cause you're like, dude, let's just do it. You know? And that was yeah. February. Let's just do what we can do. I, I do remember that. Yeah. Let's just, we, we can do audio. Let's and then we recorded an awesome three episodes like back to back with um we did Jen Underwood. Jen, Jen yeah. Underwood, yeah. uh Lynn Langett and Nick Harris. Nick Harris, yeah. And, great and, uh, great shows. They're still great shows. They are awesome shows. They are awesome shows. Um I was talking to Jen some time ago and about having her back on the show and kind of like cool. it'd be cool. It'd be cool to get Lynn back too, because she's up to some interesting stuff and uh she Nick both of them are just constantly go, yeah. go, go, go. And um, so, yeah, that's all I got, man. I think it's been an awesome ride. We, we, we've, we've PO'd a lot of, uh, well, not a lot, but we PO'd at least one published famous author guy. <laughs> um, we're still hoping the court, uh, Nicholas uh, Nassim Taleb, but we want to we wanna do that carefully. We do. I, and, I can live now, with being blocked by like a pseudo scientific self help guru on Twitter, but I wouldn't want to be blocked by Taleb. Well, you know, we could reach out to uh, to Chris Voss as well. I think that's a good name to add to that. Goal. Yeah, I mean, and and here's the thing. So here's just something I'm doing on LinkedIn Live. So I'm probably going to stream live on LinkedIn Live later today, okay. um, where basically wish everybody at Microsoft a happy new year. July 1st is the Microsoft um, fiscal calendar. It is. And, um, but um, the um, kind of the thought I had on LinkedIn was kind of doing sessions for folks that are, it, I will eventually get to the lemons to learning summit. That's kind of been dropped because of some things going on in Frank's world. Um, but um the um the idea is the, the best place i can reach and serve that mission i kind of feel like i'm on is linkedin live streaming because the engagement i get there is through the roof i mean and yeah. um you know so i want to help folks get into data science in a format that is more approachable and mm -hmm. part of that is you know yesterday was was more popular than i thought it did kind of like you know, PowerPoint skills for data pros. And it was just like 20 minutes. And it's kind of like, you know, here's how you get around this. And then I know what you're thinking that, you know, I shouldn't, my skills alone should get me where I need to go. I shouldn't have to know how to present. Like, Yeah, you might get where you're going, but the road will be a lot yeah. easier, you know, like. Absolutely. You know. So here's yeah. a story from my college days. Um, don't worry, it's PG. Um <laughs> We went to um, we went to Montreal for spring break. Now you think spring break, everybody's going to Florida, but this was literally like the last twenty four hours. We were like, let's go somewhere. I don't want to just stick around. Right. Well, where can we go? And I'm like, let's go to Montreal. Like, <laughs> and um, so all of our pictures from spring break. They apparently that year they had a big blizzard, like the the, the day or two before we got there. Oh. So our spring, I like the cold weather. So for me, it wasn't like a thing, okay. but like, but like all of our spring break photos, you know, were like us, like, you know, on top of like 20 foot snow mountains and stuff like that. And it, it was just funny. And then one of the things uh, that we did was we climbed uh, Mount Royale, which is kind of where mm -hmm. the city guy's name. And, um, but we didn't know there was an actual road up to it. So we climbed up like the side through the woods. Uh which the first two th two thirds were fun, but the final third was like almost like it was like this like seventy to seventy Good. eighty degrees. But at that point, we looked down and like no 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 no. At this point, we're like we got to do it, got to do it. And um, so the funny thing is, we finally climb over to the top of the mountain to a parking lot, mm. and 
there was like this one thing where there were like thorns on some of the things I had to grab onto. So I cut myself. So my hands were like bloody. And, but at this point I had so much adrenaline in my system. I didn't care. And I was also much younger and uh, <laughs> uh, I would have been 21 or 22 at the time. And like wow. my hands were all bloody and I think I may have even cut my face too, but I didn't care. Like I climbed it and I climbed over the, the little like um, divider thing. And then, fell into the parking lot and then got up and was like, yes. Right. Like, I, like the Ed Milet kind of, yes. Right. And right. then there were all these people just sitting there on the bench looking at me like I was insane. So, and then I realized, Oh, if there's a parking lot, there's gotta be a road. And if there's a road is probably a trail. So the moral of the story to connect it back in, so we don't we'll meander too much is that if there's an easier way, Think about taking it. <laughs> Don't do what I did by climbing up the side of Mount Royale um, and not bother to look for a trail. Um, <laughs> it is what it is. It was fun. It's a memory I'll never have. I'll never forget. But like, you know, we going down, we took the, the trail because we found it. But you know, and I, I kind of did this on another LinkedIn live stream where I talk about how, how you know how many blogs I post per month, which is mm. well over hundred now for eighteen months in a row. And I kind of said, you know, set yourself up for success, right? Like, don't, yeah. life's going to throw stuff at you randomly and you can get mad at that, but you can realize that's, that's kind of just how things work, right? Entropy right. is that thing. Um, don't make things harder on yourself if you don't have to, because don't worry, the universe, the world, God, whatever you believe in is going to do that, you know, on its own, right? Whether that's malicious or is it a way to make you grow? Again, that's the way you want to look at it. But, yeah. you know, in short, we are trying to impose order where entropy is a force, and those two forces are always in conflict. So, sure. So, don't make the moral of the story is don't climb the side of the mountain if there's a path. I like that story. I think I need to get more coffee so I can stay for more focus. Coffee sounds awesome. <laughs> you know what I really want to get as a sponsor? Wake the hell Dude. up, coffee. Yeah. Now I know. I saw. You, didn't I think I saw that on I Instagram? I put it on Instagram, well. and I'm like, it's is that like a K cup? A, it's a K cup. Yeah, I know. I'm lazy. I'm not a true aficionado, but um, uh, honestly, yeah. honestly, like, and my wife before we bought the first Keurig machine, my wife was like, "Can't you just make coffee?" And I was like, "You don't understand. The first cup <laughs> needs to be like pressed. The first cup <laughs> of coffee doesn't have to taste good." <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> It's like the opposite of wine. Like the second or exactly. third class don't have to taste as good as the first one. Um, right. But, um, you know, it's uh, uh, the first cup of coffee just has to have caffeine in it. <laughs> but yeah, Wake the Hell That's Up cool. Coffee is really good. It's really flavorful, awesome. flavorful. Um, and I'm trying to not have cream or sugar or, or any sweetener in my coffee because it helps with gotcha. weight loss and Good. Uh, stuff like that so which i'm down like 52 pounds so yay me congratulations frank that's awesome i found some of the weight you lost <laughs> <laughs> i have quite the uh i'm calling it my pandemic belly i think but, a lot uh, of people are going to have that actually that's actually a good point i should probably talk to um uh the doctor i went to dr tro mm -hmm. uh, who was a weight loss doctor and kind of have him on the show and talk about because, again, we're not doctors. He is. Uh, but for me, having a continuous glucose monitor, I think I was telling you about this. I don't know if we mentioned this on the show, um, but a continuous glucose monitor is a kind of a, it, it's kind of a, well, it's not IoT because it's not directly connected to the internet. Cause so, so if I call it IoT, someone will call me out on that. But true. <laughs> But it is a device that is NFC powered that you stick in your arm for two weeks at a time and you scan it with your phone um, and it will read your sugar levels uh, on demand or every five minutes. Hmm. And you can chart that using the app and using the website. So yeah. for me, it helped me identify when I was hungry, be more mindful of why I was hungry. Am I snacking mindlessly? But more importantly, see an immediate feedback of yes. what I was eating and how it was impacting my blood sugar. So for me, 
it turned weight loss into a data problem, right? I've yeah. always had some kind of issue with my weight for as long as I can remember. Yeah. But once I kind of saw the data and I saw it real, I mean, real as numbers on a chart can be. Yeah. Um, it made it more manageable and more understandable and less hocus pocus because when it comes to weight loss, everybody and their brother and their cousin and their dog has an opinion about how things should be done. Sure. Yet you look around obesity is an, uh, an epidemic. So opinions are like elbows. <laughs> everybody has one or two. Uh, but for yeah, me, yeah putting the data onto it and actually doing experimentation in science. Like for instance, I saw that, you know, I would eat fried mozzarella sticks and fried chicken, right? Mm. It's mostly meat. It's not going to affect my blood sugar. First day I had the CGM on, I had Caesar salad. No, no, it was grilled chicken. It was chicken salad with bacon and fried chicken. And I'm like, mm. I'm being healthy. I'm being healthy. And then, boom, I saw what my blood sugar did. And I'm like, oh. So that breading really does kind of add up. Plus the oils it's in, too, apparently. factor. Sure. So once I saw that, I'm like, you know, and and it's interesting. I, I go now and I see um, foods that used to tempt me. Mm -hmm. They don't tempt me. But there was a time when they did tempt me. But I'm like, oh, God, that's going to spike my sugar. And you also yeah. get back when you're when your sugar's going up man you feel awesome like it's like woo it's the crash that hurt <laughs> yes so it's kind of like it becomes like this um bit like reinforcement learning if you will you know the 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 upside um is fun but the downside it becomes like you know mozzarella sticks were a big kind of thing for me and i would eat them back when wegmans had the open buffet Yes. Like I'd buy like just fill like one of those things with it and be like, yeah, I'm eating hell, I'm eating, I'm eating low carb. And um, then I see what my blood sugar did, and I was like, I have not had one since. Now part of that is helped by the fact that they've closed their open food buffet because of the pandemic. Sure, sure. But there have been times when I was like really hungry and I stopped. I'm not gonna lie, I stopped and I kind of did what I did with that with that other guy's protein shakes and bars. I'm like, no. <laughs> let me tell you from someone who's who's been trying to lose weight for a while a, yeah. a version works a lot better than willpower yeah yes you know it's the carrot and the stick it's not either or and right. the other thing that's cool about this is um i guess this is a true proper retrospective because we're meandering like we usually do because we had no set topic we were just testing this thing out for five minutes <laughs> before your call and here we are uh, <laughs> sometime later um but uh the part of this is 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 the instant feedback because by the time weight is a lagging indicator so right you can eat you know chicken salad or chicken and just salad and just really be good on your diet for a week or two before mm -hmm. you would see any progress on the scale right if you see progress at all. And that's very demoralized. I mean, I, it is. I guess, yeah. Kind of the obvious, but for me, you feel like you're getting away with it. Right. I mean, you, you're eating what you want. Right. It's right. Not, it's, not, it's not impacting you because you're right. not measuring the right thing. But this adds more of a real time component because your sugar mm -hmm. responds within 20 minutes. And uh, yeah, I guess technically speaking, that's not real time, but 20 minutes versus a few weeks. That's, that's a quantum leap forward. Near real time. It's near, it's, you know, I'm sure at some point there's going to be another one because one of the debates now in the, the low carb kind of keto world is, um, you know, I drink too much uh, uh, Dr. Pepper. Um, one of the debates now is, you know, does the artificial sweeteners raise your insulin, which may not raise your blood sugar because there's no sugar there, but does it trick that? And then, so there, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of debate about that. So, you know, one day maybe when there'll be like a cgm but you know uh, for insulin um yeah that that you know that would be another thing too but you know so it adds a more of a real-time component because i you know and i would eat stuff that i wasn't sure about and i would do it you know with a with a with a twinkle in my eye it's for science you know 
Um, but to be fair, if I did find something really did spike my blood sugar, I wouldn't have it again. Right. So, um, you know, I've mostly been been good. <laughs> All right. So with that, I think we're actually going to end the show. Um, Hopefully, if all has gone well, you're listening to this on our podcast feed. uh, And this all worked the way it's supposed to. And um, you have a great day. Any parting words of wisdom on this three years or so of podcasting? I know, Frank, it's just been great. And I appreciate you taking me along for the ride. Dude, I couldn't imagine a road without you, man. We were a good balance in a lot of ways. We got a, a lot of good yang, got a good yang, because you know, part of the part of thought I had was when I started the podcast, when I not when I started, but when I had the first ideation of it at yeah. Dunkin' Donuts. Right, right. Dunkin' Donuts uh, at so if you're in Maryland or in the DC area, it's the Dunkin' Donuts uh, at the corner of Queens Orchard and um, Norristown Road. Um, behind the gas station and McDonald's, a real luxurious place, if you will. Um, but um, no, and it was just like, you know, I, as I kind of dwelled on the idea, I didn't think I didn't approach you until like December. So like I kind of ruminated on a week or two. Yeah. Like if I want to do a podcast, what what would it be? And, you know, I didn't want to, you added more of the data engineering kind of panache and credibility than, than I had, which I would have been in data science side. So I think, I think we're a good team for multiple levels. I, I think we're a great team, Frank. And I, uh, and I love working with you, brother. Likewise, man. Well, cool. You have a great afternoon. Well, who knows when you're listening to this, but whatever remainder of the day it is, I hope you have a good one. And we look forward to helping folks and um, providing you with good education and entertainment and silly jokes and ridiculousness and meand- meandering stories for the next three years. Thanks for listening to Data Driven. In case you're wondering, I am an AI-generated voice. Yes, the robots have come for the voiceover jobs as well. We live in interesting times.